Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. What is a bone callus in a metatarsal stress fracture? Well, that's what we're talking about today on the Doc on the Run podcast. Now, a bone callus is something that you may see on an x-ray and it may actually cause some concern and perhaps even some problems later if you don't really understand it and don't know what to do about it or whether or not you should just ignore it. Now, a bone callus is actually a lump. Just like if you rub your hands a lot, if you're digging ditches and you get big calluses on your hand, or if you look at your feet, maybe on your big toe, on your heel, on the outside of your foot, you may have some spots that you put a lot of pressure and friction on and you get really thick calluses, which is basically just a thick lump of skin. Well, a bone callus is similar. Now, a bone callus is actually a thing that forms when the bone gets injured. And it happens a couple of different ways, but a bone callus, first of all, is normal, but when you see it on an x-ray, it may make you really worried because it looks really abnormal. It's a lump. You can see it on the x-ray. It's a bulge in the bone. It's usually kind of round right around where that fracture is. Now, sometimes when you have a stress fracture and your doctor doesn't see anything on the x-rays, they will tell you, we're going to have you back in four weeks or six weeks, and we'll take an x-ray to confirm that this was actually a stress fracture. And what they're usually looking for is that formation of a lump around where they couldn't see a crack that signifies the bone is healing, which then later confirms you had a stress fracture. Now, there's two reasons you really need to understand this. The first thing is there's two kinds of callus, really. And if you look it up, you'll see all kinds of confusing um, physiology terms. You'll see fibroblasts, chondroblasts, osteoblasts, osteoclasts. Um, you see fibrocartilage uh, callus as a description. And what happens is you get a crack in the bone, you get a blood clot, and then within that blood clot, you get fibrocartilage developing between the two bones that creates a cushion with the cartilage and, it can, and it's some connections that form stability with the fibrous part of it. So it's collagen mostly, but that's where those terms come from. So fibroblasts actually are the Uh, little cells that lay down strands of collagen that bind the bone together to help hold it still. So it's a whole bunch of little strings holding it together. Chondroblasts make cartilage, and so they form the the stiffer material that's cushioning in between the bones that also adds some rigidity to that soft callus that actually holds the bone still. When you get that formed, that amount of cushioning stability, that kind of firm glue that's holding it together, that usually causes the fracture to stop hurting. That's also where a lot of people are tempted to start running and they rip it apart and then it starts to hurt again and you do that over and over and it causes a real problem. So what happens here is that you get this bony or cartilaginous or fibrocartilaginous bridge between the bones and what happens is that over time it will ossify or turn into bone. Now all of that big lump of stuff in there starts to get calcium deposited in it, that's when it shows up on an x-ray. That's a bone callus. The first thing is is that it can be too big. So you would think the bigger it is, the more stable it is. And that's sort of true, except that a, a really large callus in the bone often signifies too much motion in the bone. And so it's just a sign that your body is actually trying really hard to stop those pieces of bone from moving against one another, and you get a really large callus. Now, you would think, well, great, that's going to make it stronger. Not necessarily, because that's disorganized bone. And what happens is you have a balance of these two bone cells called osteoblasts and osteoclasts that actually go and work together to one of them actually eats out a channel of the disorganized bone that's weaker, and then the, the next cell comes down and lays down more organized bone in a much more stable way. And so over time, those two bone cells remodel the bone and make it stronger, and and the callus will usually dissipate and get resorbed over time, but you may, decades later, see it on an x-ray where there's still a slight bulge. That brings up a couple of other problems. One is that if the callus is really big and your body doesn't resorb it, it can take up space. So it pushes on other things like the inner ossei muscle or the nerves that, that lead to a Morton's neuroma. And if it's pushing on neighboring structures, you might get pain just because that lump of bone is pushing on other things in your foot. That can be a problem. The other thing is that if you get one of those and you basically treat the stress fracture on your own, you treat it yourself, or you just had an achy foot after an ultra marathon, you took some time off, didn't really think about it that much, but it healed on its own, 
you could actually have a scenario where you go in to see the doctor, you have some foot pain, they take an x-ray and they see that lump and they say, ah, you have a stress fracture, you can't run. And that may or may not be true because if you don't have a previous x-ray that shows that it wasn't there before your foot started hurting, it could have been years ago that you actually got that. But the, cal the, the bone callus actually causes a misdiagnosis as a new stress fracture when it was really an old completely healed stress fracture that is no longer a problem. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about uh, the bone callus, how it happens in stress fractures and what it really means and whether or not you need to worry about it if you see one on an x-ray uh, when you have foot pain. So if you like this episode, please like it, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next training. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.